What's going on everyone? Welcome to another video. Now, I just thought I'd make this video to talk about what's happened over the last few days. I had a very amazing experience and I needed to share it with you all. So, a few days ago, I was invited by two people who work at a juvenile um, justice centre, so a juvenile remand centre where they keep teenage offenders before they are sentenced uh, to jail. So it's, just, it's, a, it's a youth prison, basically. And I was invited to talk there. I did five consecutive uh, speeches there. So I want, to t I want to talk to you about how that felt for me. I mean, the last time I seen prison gates was when I was being released about four years ago. And it just, to, to be outside of that place uh, walking in, it brought all those memories back to me. And it was a very, it was very nerve wracking for me to walk back through those gates back into the system because I want to leave that part of myself behind me. So yeah, it was a very, very bizarre and a very surreal experience walking back in through there as a visitor. And that's what I said to the, the prisoners. I mean, I said, this is very strange for me to be walking back in here as a visitor because I'm, I'm used to being in your position. Before I started my talks, I had uh, sort of a, a briefing about some of the you know, some of the guys, some of the, the kids, they're not, they're not, they're not small kids. They were big, you know, big kids, big 18 year olds that some of them are, so as an 18 year old in Australia, you're classed as an adult, you know, a bit of a briefing to tell me that some of this, these guys, they're, they're hard cases, you know, that there's, there's fights, there's, it's a prison, you know, it's a prison setting. I already had this, it's sort of a, a bit of, bit of nerves at, at how, how people would take what I have to say. Obviously I went in there as someone who's gonna share their transformation and inspire them. And that was supposed to be the base of my talk, sort of the backbone of my talk. And obviously part of my story is being a vegan activist. So that's what I wanted to interweave into it. I had to do it very cleverly. The first group, so I got told that, yeah, the first group is gonna be the hardest. They are, they are the, they're probably the hardest, so it's good to get them out of the way first. The difference between me talking to a bunch of, uh, you know, offenders, uh, youth detainees, is that I'm going to drop my guard a bit in the way that I'm not going to ha- I, I can swear. Well, I, I felt like I wanted to swear. I felt like I wanted to talk in their language. So the old me came out a lot more. The way I conducted myself was in a way that they know that I've been where they're at. So I'm one of them. So my, my stories were a lot more graphic. Okay, so I didn't hold back. I really, really spoke from my heart, you know, and they knew. They knew that People in that world, they can tell, they can work you out pretty quickly. They're very street smart. They can look at you and say, has he been there? Yeah, he's been there. You know what I mean? And that's and they, they knew that I, that the life I come from was legit. The way they, they reacted to my talk, um, the two ladies that brought me in there, uh, they're vegans, um, Izzy and Grace. They said that they it's hard to hold their, their focus for more than 10 minutes. I mean, they're just... Phew, they're just all over the shop. And I had them hanging on my every word. Okay, I had them hanging on my every word. Now, after they'd heard my story, okay, my, my story and pulling myself away from gangs and drugs and prison, the place that they're in right now, then I talked about veganism. And I talked about veganism in a way that they would understand. I said, how many people have got dogs here? If someone were to hurt your dog, you'd probably want to smash their face in, right? Probably not the way that I would go about talking about it with other with with a normal demographic in society, but these are a very particular group of people. So I spoke to them in the language they would understand, and they, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. And I said, well, that's all vegan veganism is, except it's not a dog getting hurt; it's a pig getting stabbed in the throat or getting pushed into a gas chamber. And I think, like, pigs are innocent. Like we live in a society that defends children. Okay, someone hurts a kid, yeah, yeah, you know, you want to sort them out for it. But these pigs, these cows, these chickens, these lambs, they are innocent, innocent beings that we're slaughtering. And when I was talking about it, someone from the back put his hand up and he goes, I respect that, bro. And I was like, wow, wow, there's a bunch of hardened um, teenagers in here. Some of them look like they've been in the juvie system for a while. You can tell the, by the ones that are a bit more hard, you know, a bit more hardened by their condition, their conditions in jail, their environment. What's what it's like life on the streets, and they said I respect you as a vegan. I res I respect that philosophy of veganism. Now, now to me that is huge. That is huge. And they wanted to know questions. They want to know what gang I was in. I'm, I'm not going to divulge that information, but they wanted to question. I said, is there any questions you have about animals? And bang, they had them. Lions, 
Where did, what about protein? Um, yeah, but they'll put it for us to eat, eh? And then I could go through it with them. Talk to them on their level about, you know, the dairy, the dairy industry. And they were very, very interested. And it was, it was amazing. It was amazing. Now, with the first group, at the end of it, they all come up, each one of them, and shook my hand and said, respect, bro. Thanks for coming in. Like that. And it was just an amazing experience. Now, I had four more talks after that. Four more. So if the first, first one went well, I was like, oh, now we've got the second one and the third one and the fourth group and the fifth group. And it was just like, wow, what are these prisoners going to be like? Are they going to take the message on? But every single um, group took it on fantastically. The third group was very, was probably the toughest, very loud. And as soon as they walked in, oh, what, what gang are you from? Oh, yeah, what, what are you vegan? Oh, you know, so very loud. And I was just, I held my own. And um, I said, you know, I'll get to all your questions, but just listen to my story. The thing that I want to drive home is that going back into these, uh, into the system that, and telling my story, it really signifies that that part of my past is gone. I, c I wouldn't have been able to do this one year out, one year, two years out of the game, three years out of that game. But I think now I, it's that far part of my past. Now I've got that confidence and the courage to be able to go back in and say, hey, I'm out for good and this is my story. I know, I know by looking at those kids, I planted some seeds in their mind. Now they might not just, oh, well, I'm going to do a transformation, but they might get to a point in their life one day where they feel like I've had enough. And I remember that Joey guy who come in here and, and he had enough that day and he changed his whole life. So I wanted them to know that no matter where you're at, you know, you can change your life too. Knowing how far gone I was, anyone can do it. It was just a very, very significant moment in my life to walk back in through those walls and talk to these guys. And I think if anyone's going to get through to them, it's going to be me. I'm just, I was so grateful for the opportunity. I, it just felt like, you know, like if I died tomorrow, would I be happy with the legacy I left behind? I mean, when I was doing all that stuff in the gangs and in the dr drugs and, you know, hurting people around me, hurting myself, if I died then... That's the legacy I would have left behind, you know what I mean? But now, now what do I leave behind? I leave behind my story. I leave behind my stance against animal uh, cruelty and slavery. You know that? That's what I leave behind. Who I am. And I hope some of these guys can take something from it. So I just wanted to share that with you all. Um, thanks so much for all your support. Thank you to my Patreons. Thank you to just everyone generally supporting me lately. It's been overwhelming. And I just wanted to share that with you because... It really is a monumentous moment for me, coming from where I come from, having a gun in my mouth, wanting to escape my reality that badly just to, you know, to, to end it all. But if I'd ended it that day, I would never have had a chance to give back the way that I have. So life's funny that way. Life is funny that way. All the, all the situations in my past have led me to here now. And now I've got this golden opportunity to give back and hopefully change some people's lives forever. I never had much, run with the bad bunch Little skinny kids sneaking weed in my bag lunch And off the junior high, we was just getting by And drive-bys, ride my homies of the young lives I never did cry, and even though I had pain in my heart I was hopeless from the start they